which I'm an IT security consultant. Um, I call it IT security to underline the fact that I'm resolutely trailing edge. I don't do leading edge. I don't call it cyber, unfortunately. I've done some red teaming, uh, but most of my work is most of my work is um, uh, good old-fashioned application pen testing, which I do for a financial institution in the in the city nearby. Okay. Um, having said that, my main interest is actually in secure design and secure coding. What I want to talk about now is secure coding. Um, pen testing itself is a pretty bad time, as everybody knows, to start talking to developers. Uh, it's not desperately bad. It's a good opportunity to get de developers talking to uh, security people. It's a good learning opportunity. I think of my developers as uh, my graduates sometimes, but it's a pretty bad way of educating a department. The problems of educating a whole department are too complicated to get into here. What actually happens in practice, if you're lucky, is you get to talk to a project team right at the beginning of the project, and um, you can start introducing them to security concepts. Now, a good thing to do is to start by um, finding out what they already know about security. So a question like, do you know, know the terms um, SQL injection? Do you know what cross-site scripting is? Pretty good way to start. You'd be surprised, some of you would be surprised, some less, that actually quite a few developers don't know what SQL injection is or cross-site scripting. Or they, they might have heard of the terms, but they're not really so familiar with them. The thing is, security ideas don't get into the heads very well of developers. Uh, here's a picture. Um, it's Brexit ready. That says, let's look at this. This says, I'll send you the link. Um, think of this as way, the way ideas spread. Cross-site scripting is an idea that spreads into everybody's heads here, no problem. It doesn't spread so easily into the heads of developers. Um, and <coughs> it's, that's just an unfortunate fact. Developers' heads have more things in them. They talk, they, they, this, is a, this is a great slide from a website called Talking to Tech Leads by Patrick Quar. Um, here's the areas of domain knowledge that technical people need to um, to have to do development. Um, can I have a straw poll? Is there anybody here who actually is primarily a developer? There's just a few. Are there any security, how many security people actually work with developers primarily? So a few more, okay. So a lot of this is not really directly relevant to security. I got it right, finally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, leadership, project management, all this sort of stuff. Most of the stuff that we're interested in is in the um, green thing here, writing code, design patterns, that sort of stuff. This is another picture of the kind of information we're interested in. This is, this is a fake maths equation, it's not real. Um, a department's knowledge base. What you find in big organisations is different departments have a great deal of autonomy. They have their own legacy systems, they have their own technology stacks. And this is one of the things that makes targeting um, application security training very difficult. So they have their own languages, their own grammars, their own technology stack, business domain knowledge, project methodology, tooling, the whole thing is all different. We have to insert our security knowledge and security advice into that knowledge base that's already filling the developers' heads. What actually happens in practice is that there's a lead developer. Going back to this picture, the tech lead, maybe a security um, expert, a security champion, they put together coding guidelines at the beginning of the project. These coding guidelines cover everything, things like capitalization, how big methods ought to be, important stuff. If you're lucky, they also include a section on secure coding guidelines. And this is essentially what I want to talk about. Development projects do this all the time. Lots of development teams have this sort of thing. Sometimes there's security, IT security specialist input into it, sometimes there isn't. What I would like to propose is that we capture this. I don't know, um, my purpose of the pitch here is to find out if anybody's interested. Uh, it would certainly be useful for me. Here's an idea. So I'm calling this a JDI, just do it. So we capture the 
coding guidelines that projects have produced for reuse later, reformat them. And this is an example. So it'd be very specific, very technology specific. This is an example of cross-site scripting with JSP. JSP is old hat, but there's a lot of it around. Um, and this is a very specific example for processing where the user's not allowed to put in markup. There's no, there's no rich text, it's just a plain ordinary form. Often happens. It really simplifies the problem of telling people how to write secure code. You just say, escape all the stuff before you put it into element bodies. You don't have to do any fancy uh, sanitization. Another project, of course, might want to do that. So another project might want um, a coding guideline that actually says how to do it. The idea of these JDIs is to give very specific actionable advice that's tailored particularly to one set of technology and one, um, one security vulnerability. It's like an implementation of the OWASP cheat sheets. There could be many. They're recipes. If you don't like them, if they don't work for your project, they don't sort your coding guidelines, pick another one. The contract, the promise would be, follow these, this recipe, follow these instructions, and your code will pass the pen test. So that's pretty much it. If anybody is interested, interested enough to say contribute code, or review code that's been contributed, drop me a line, edwin.org, or check out the link for that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the great idea. So obviously this is uh, to create uh, cookbooks and recipes for developers uh, as a very quick solution for them. Okay, um, we run out of time, so I'd like to thank very much the, um, our hosts, WorldPay and David and Sitzel over there. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. Uh, many, many thanks to our speakers, uh, Greg, Edwin, Dennis. Um, and Apostolos. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to move to the pub next door, which is all bar one. So once you exit this building, just turn left and left again and you will see all bar one. And this is where we're going to be drinking and networking until the pub closing time. Thank you very much everyone. And we'll see you next time in July. Thank you.